Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lucien Avramov and I'm a principal engineer at Cisco working uh, in the Insiemi business unit, Nexus 9000 and ACI. Uh, so my purpose today is to share a couple of things on my mind around our technology, what we're doing. Some are um, some new topics that I'm uh, interested in looking, but most and foremost, I want to also see what you're interested in terms of getting out of the session for, for the hour just so I can be of good use of your time. So um, in terms of topics, I have a couple of slides, but my idea was to go over some of the ACI um, latest um, type of um, solution that we have, which includes service chaining and includes um, communication with uh, bare metal and um, different hypervisors um, and as well OpenStack. So that's one topic. Another topic, um, I'll try to show you some of the Docker things we're doing. Um, so I'll look at showing you maybe some of the demo and tell you the concepts of how I see ACI helping or integrating with Docker and how is that different from just being um, a virtualized uh, or a VM. Many people in the industry, when they start talking about Docker, they say, oh, you just take everything you know about VMware or virtual machines and this container is the same. I, I don't really think it's the same, um, so I'll, hopefully um, I'll be able to get to show you a little demo um, so I can illustrate that. And the third topic on my mind is something that I've been talking for some time, but um, I don't know if you're aware of it or not. It's group-based policy, um, and that's related to uh, OpenStack in particular. So these were kind of the three topics I picked to, to make an hour. Um, have some slide decks and mainly what I was thinking is to show you some demos so you can get the concepts and then we can maybe have a conversation or um, yeah, follow with that. So, okay. Um, all right, so I don't know if, um, you turn this on, there you go. Um, I showed a demo um, yesterday at Onag. I don't know if some of you were at the the POC demos for overlay underlay, um, but it's something that we uh, that I built it up recently in the lab um, just for the purpose of that demo. So, and this is some of the um, this is including our, our latest software, uh, which is currently in um, in beta uh, EFT early field trial and which is releasing in a, in a few weeks. So it's the latest ACI type of software. And here the purpose of the demo I wanted to show is basically have a um, bare metal server, which is connected to a VXN fabric. This VXN fabric is BGP VPN. So it's, in my case, it's uh, Cisco Nexus switches, which are running in NXOS mode. And um, I have three switches, I have a spine as well. So I'm just peering with, uh, with uh, BGP and I'm doing uh, VXLAN throughout that and tunneling. So my hardware VTAP is here. And then I go VXLAN um, out to here. Here I have a default gateway. This is my L3 out. And this is an ACI fabric that I have. Surely um, it, it consists of a couple of leaves and spines. <clears throat> and what is interesting is this flow in red. Um, it's to see how the bare metal server will go inside the ACI fabric through out a Palo Alto firewall. And then um, once we have the proper rule for that device IP, it will go to a F5 load balancer. Out of there, we'll load balance traffic across KVM, uh, where I have three OpenStack VMs and Hyper-V, Microsoft. Could also add VMware, but in this case, I'm using KVM and Hyper-V, just to show you a multi-hypervisor environment. So, Really, uh, and on top of this, so I have a controller, an ACI controller over here, uh, which provisions this fabric, and it's a single point of management, obviously. On top of that, I have an OpenStack controller. I'm using Red Hat in this instance. And so from Red Hat, I can create VMs, and I can create um, network uh, definitions, so I can create a new subnet. And what happens with OpenStack is on one side, it will go and create the virtual machines on the uh, Red Hat compute nodes. 
And in parallel, when I create new network, it will push through Gauda driver to the controller the information about the new network. It's being created for these VMs. And that configuration will be pushed down on all the devices. So in this type of environment, um, what I'll show you is we'll, we'll get this, 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 for example, bare metal server to just do a wget and try to reach the virtual machines here, which are web servers in this instance. And so I'll just show you how web traffic is being load balanced across. Um, and these appliances get dynamically provisioned. So in a glimpse of a few seconds, uh, we'll get these provisioned and configured from scratch through Gout API from our controller over here. And um, once they're configured, the traffic will go through. Is the Opflex agent for OVS, is that something, where is that today in terms of open source development and whatnot? Absolutely. So actually here I'm using Opflex, the Opflex agent for OVS for uh, Red Hat KVM. And um, it's, currently in, uh, it's currently available on GitHub. Um, and it's becoming uh, supported in terms of official Cisco support with scale, testing, and so on from this software release that's coming now. And that's using off-the-shelf OBS, certain version, I would imagine. But. So we're not, Opflex is not, so Opflex is basically a, a Cisco op, um, OVS version, if you will, which is open source. Um, there is a draft on ATF which exactly describes the, the packet, what, what is in the, what's the encapsulation. It uses VXLAN. So when you install the agent, you're getting OBS too, is that what you're saying? Or? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's basically, when, once you install that agent, that takes care of the OVS part. Right? And what's different here with Opflex compared to OVS is that Opflex understands policy. So Opflex will understand contracts, application profiles. And Opflex is a, um, enables you to also do VXLAN tunneling as well. So you can see that as a, a, a way to communicate from the hypervisors with the policy information of ACI, for example, or non-ACI, you could just use Opflex, uh, and policy in general, okay. Um, so that's, that's the first thing I, I, I'd like to show you. So uh, in terms of vis visualization of what you will see, just in terms of network, so you, you see the number of things that happen within the fabric. When traffic will come over here, this can be seen as an outside network, and it will reach the firewall outside interface. Once it passes, we'll go on the inside, so this can be kind of a DMZ type of, of network. And then um, after that, we get load balanced on the inside part across all the VMs that exist on the VIP. So this server, it will try to reach the, the virtual IP address at the load balancer, which will spray the traffic across the different VMs that exist. Okay. And the firewall will be doing that from in, uh, outside to inside um, as well. Okay. So um, any questions? Should I go and, and show you that on a demo? Just curious again on the OBS, you know, couldn't there, would there have been a way to allow customers to install OBS from source? and then just install the Opflex agent separately to then manipulate forwarding and policy as necessary. I only ask because I can remember a year ago there was, you know, it was just like a really bad thing for NSX to have their own version of, of OBS for NSX. And you know, now it's something like similar for, for ACI. So basically Opflex is, once you start using that Opflex agent, you don't need OVS. It's basically an open source agent that runs on the hypervisor where it replaces the OVS agent per se. Should OVS be on that slide? Just, is it, just, right. I'm, so is, it, is it using OVS or, or is it like another virtual switch construct in that agent? We have, it's a virtual switch construct. However, this hypervisor can have, it could leverage Opflex for an ACI fabric, but if you have something else you connect and you want to still have OVS, it's a layer which is under, that's why I left it. So say you have a fabric with different things going on and you can, you can have that. Yep. So um, do, do you want to see that live maybe on a demo? Yeah. 
So what I have here on the screen is first of all a the controller UI for ACI and um, a couple of other things are happening. So while I log in over this, I also have OpenStack. Um, this is a Red Hat OpenStack distribution, which basically has a plugin, which is the ACI plugin for Neutron, which enables to basically um, translate any network configuration you make on OpenStack to push that down to the controller and the, to the ACI controller. And so the ACI controller provisions the switches. So it makes a seamless, basically, configuration from OpenStack itself. Uh, the installation of the plugin doesn't require um, a restart of the server. It's just basically a little package you add um, on OpenStack once you installed it. I have also an F5 firewall uh, load balancer, in which I'll log in now. as well, and a Palo Alto uh, firewall this time around. Okay. Surprising. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive, yeah. The login process? Or <laughs> no, the fact no, that, that, you, that you're not yeah. showing an ASA. Figure it would be maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, do I want to change my default settings? I don't. I'll go here in tenants, and let me show you first a visual of what you're going to see. So I'll go in OpenStack tenant. Every time you create um, network and compute in OpenStack, it creates a tenant called OpenStack on, on, the, on the ACI aspect. That's absolutely configurable. You can call the tenant whatever you like. There's a configuration file on OpenStack where you can specify the tenant names that you wish, as well as if you have a sub specific subset of VLANs, VXLANs, ranges you want to use, you can hard code these or leave, leave it open to the system to, to decide. So I'll go here in, in the application um, EPG, admin, application profile. And um, this is the graph, or this shows actually the dynamic of my application profiles and the providers and the receiver of the contract service. So what you see here is I have um, OpenStack and I have Hyper-V. And um, these are VMs which belong to the web tier EPG. So they are my web servers. That web tier connects with a contract that I called external web. Um, and this connects to the external endpoint group which is basically going out, out of the border leave of ACI to, towards the fabric, that other VXN fabric that I showed you. So we're going outside of that fabric through get another fabric um, to a bare metal server that you see drawn here. Um, the arrow shows the, um, how the contract is. We permit traffic. Um, we provide services to the bare metal server. So the bare metal server will basically be able to access the VMs by the service that's provided through ACI. That's what the little arrows show. Okay, so um, now with that said, I'm going to go here and also log in into my bare metal server. That bare metal server, I'll try to access the virtual IP, the VIP of the, of the load balancer. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to reach that network because my services are not provisioned. There is no configuration on F5 or on Palo Alto as of yet. And how do I know that? I would just go here in security policies, contracts, external web, which is this, this contract I showed you on the photo. And over here, the service graph. So the service graph will show if something is currently being applied uh, or not, and what are the options of service graphs that I can apply? Um, while uh, this loads, should be almost there, there you go. You see there is nothing currently selected. What I will show you is I will select the OpenStack Palo Alto Networks and F5 graph, which will do a service chaining between the two devices one after the other. 
before I do so, I'd like to show you F5 and Palo Alto configuration so you see that there is nothing yet configured on them. So I'll go to local traffic, network map, and there is nothing in network map. And as well, what I want you to pay attention is the partition. Um, here you see the only partition that is available is called common. So this is the default partition. Um, so there is no configuration made yet. When ACI will configure, um, F5 will have a new partition created, which will be called APIC. Again, the names could be changed. It's just for the demo purpose. Virtual servers, the list of servers that we're load balancing to, there's none currently. Okay. So that's an empty state for F5. Going in Palo Alto, um, I'm clicking on network. And here what you see is I, I'm going to be using Ethernet 1 and 2 as ports. Currently, they don't have an IP address configured. And um, there is no state being up. So nothing is being provisioned yet on that device. All the interfaces are without IPs. And if I go into policy, um, I don't have any rule, for example, for NAT. I don't have anything configured to say, this is my inside outside interface and I'd like to use these specific subnets to NAT between them. So it's in an empty state at this point. Um, now I can go and select here the Palo Alto F5 service graph and I can click on, click on submit. Now when I go here on this, it's still trying to do the wget. Um, this is my bare metal server. Um, so I clicked here, I believe I clicked submit, yep. So now what we'll see is how this will start to get provisioned. Um, let's go in network. Okay, so um, you see now we have an IP address. Um, we have 168.3.100 for the outside interface and that 2.100 for the inside. So Ethernet 1 and 2 have been configured as layer 3 interfaces. Um, if I go into policies, there is now a NAT policy as well that's been configured here. And if I go into big IP, um, I'll refresh by this button um, over here. And I'm going to look at partition. I now have an APIC partition, which I'll click on. And so I have a network map where now I have a pool. These are the IPs of the virtual machines that are web servers. Um, three of them are OpenStack, that 2, that 4, and that 5. And that 201 is a Hyper-V node. And so this has been provisioned in F5. Um, soon, you'll see this uh, double get once all the configuration has been finished to provision um, across these two. We'll, we'll see this to, um, to success. Um, okay. We'll try again. And as you see, now the wget operation went through. So we basically provisioned, of course, there's a prerequisite of just configuring a service graph and knowing the IPs and this, what, how you access an F5 in a Palo Alto. But as, as soon as you click on provision service graph, it took less than a minute. It took about 30 to 45 seconds to get communication going and redirect all that traffic flow from the outside world, inside an ACI fabric, going from an, 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 inside, uh, an outside network DMZ to the VMs being, being, uh, going across. Um, now, um, if I just go here, and for example, delete that service graph and click submit. Once I remove it, communication is cut. Right. You can get more creative um, in terms of, of you can have different appliances, different type of service chaining for different type of use cases. Maybe you just need a load balancer. Maybe you need a, uh, just a firewall. Or you can daisy chain them. Or maybe you, you need um, to use different type of vendors as well um, in your environment. What does that mean if you have like you know overlapping rules and, and different service graphs built out for different applications? How does that what happens before it goes to the firewall? Is there a rendering process to know if one rule can break another or something like that? Um, okay, we we basically 
Well, or, or, so it's good practice with sure. dedicating interfaces for certain contexts and tenants and things like that. Basically, um, with ACI, you'll follow the model of configuring your application network profiles, and you will create your EPGs, your endpoint groups. So it's you can define how you want to create them. In this case, I have web and external and, and public, and I haven't decided to choose manually the IP addressing. I just let it, the system choose it. In this case, OpenStack actually decided. Um, if you have overlapping IPs or, or subnets and they're on different EPGs, we're still routing and we're using a VXLAN fabric. So it doesn't really matter what, what's being chosen by default. If you'd like to, you own the subnets that are being used and make sure there's no overlaps, you can do so. Now, if you're using different, different appliances and they will follow the ACI model. So as long as you create into ACI the structure with the EPGs and you have routed access, then there shouldn't be a conflict in terms of the, the, um, the appliances using accessing different EPGs for inside and outside in the service graph. Um, but if your question is, does Palo Alto, will Palo Alto talk to an ASA to make sure they don't overlap? They, 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 they wouldn't. They would just talk to, they would just receive an, an order of uh, being configured from ACI in terms of, okay, this, on this, um, this will be your NAT rule. You will NAT for these subnet to that subnet. Um, but that information will not be, for example, pushed to another firewall to say, oh, be aware that someone else is using such. I guess it's more about, you know, what's good practice if you have, you know, X number of tenants in your ACI environment and you had your EPGs built out per tenant yep. and would you want to use the same appliance across all those tenants? You, um, well, if your appliance, for example, is virtual, you have, you have to, you have to scale it out. So as, as your, your appliance will be, your VM or your appliance will be able to just will have limitation in terms of how many subnets or how much throughput it can handle. Um, based on that, you have to get guide. I mean, ACI per se wouldn't know, oh, I reached the limit of firewall, let me create a new one. It's more, even, even you, you, want to, you want to split, yeah, you want to split the workload. You want to have a, a, a cluster with basically multiple VMs. Uh, um, for example, if you take Palo Alto, you'll have Panorama and you have that will kind of manage the cluster of all the, um, the Palo Alto VMs uh, firewalls. And when that one will see that they're reaching out of um, scale, it can, um, it, it should be able to spin more type of VMs to, to share. I guess a better, better analogy would be if you had like QA, test and prod, tenants and ACI, and you had, you know, those EPGs and each, you know, you know, Oh, you know, whatever it is, if it's web app, DMZ, those EPGs in each one, you know, how does it map back to the firewall policy that you'd want to use? You know, is it, like for now, say a context, like a virtual firewall on, within the, if it was a physical appliance, or here, would you recommend, hey, you know, dedicate a virtual ASA, virtual firewall per, like per one that way, the policy, because otherwise it's overlapping IP addresses, like per, sure. like per object, or per, yeah. Sure. yeah. Best practice, I wouldn't say you, you need one VM per, per EPG or per contract. It's because, well, protect, no, well, it depends how many EPGs you would have in there. I would say this is more bound to really what's the scale of what the, the appliance will give you. Why would you want to have a separation of, so I have. If, the, if it's like the same three EPGs and IPs exist in every tenant, Hypothetically, if your QA, if the one policy was different for prod versus like another, you know, for tests or something, and you're using the same firewall, like the policy would c conflict. Sure, and then the firewall will basically refuse the configuration okay. and it will fail. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. So in that case, you can, you can basically create more. Okay. Um, I don't foresee that to be actually a, a, a natural issue because by default, I mean, the subnets that are chosen are not overlapping by default. It's more of if an end user goes and really decides to, to do that. Yeah. And there's some valid use cases. For example, you're in a production environment and you want to use the same subnet that you have in the test environment. 
So in that case, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what I, I wanted to show. I actually I, I omitted to show you the part in, in OpenStack, but basically here I have co two compute nodes and one VM on one um, hypervisor and two VMs on the other compute node. Um, and if I go into networks, um, this is the IP of my web tier, the web EPG. So 192.168.1.0, which is basically the same, obviously, as the one for OpenStack here. And, um, and when I created that web tier that I called here web tier, it pushed in ACI an EPG called web-tier as well. So that name here that you see comes from basically OpenStack itself. Okay. And if I go in networking and I open the bridge domain relevant to the web tier, right, admin web tier, and I look at subnets, of course, the hardware, the network, the switches will be the default gateway. It's any case gateway, so all the switches will answer to the same IP, 192.168.1.1. There is um, another added value um, that, uh, in ACI. It's as with the technology, we have the knowledge of the overlay and underlay, um, and we correlate both informations. We have visibility into troubleshooting, which becomes really interesting. So um, you can basically, um, in, in the demo that was with the firewall and load balancer, and I was trying to do a wget, when the services were not configured, I would be dropping packets. and. If I here, this screenshot um, basically was, this is the big IP F5 and the Palo Alto is on the other side of my topology. But basically I, I, I was monitoring this leaf here and um, basically I was monitoring traffic from the, um, the, the external world to the Palo Alto outside interface. And what I was seeing was drops. And when I had drops is when I hadn't configured the service graph. And as soon as I configured the service graph, then I had packets, sorry, going through the network. So there is a troubleshooting wizard, which basically allows you to say, I would like to know traffic between this virtual machine and that virtual machine, traffic between this virtual machine and this firewall or load balancer, or traffic for this subset of virtual machines which are, which are part of an endpoint group and the firewall or another endpoint group. So you can decide what you want to monitor and where you want to monitor it. And then you start the counters at the locations you'd like to monitor this. And you will have an exact correlation of what traffic, how many packets go through, how many packets are dropped, where are they dropped. Um, and furthermore, we could also think about drilling down and tell you why. Um, so, for example, if you have a misconfiguration of a routing protocol, a difference of timer, um, and sometimes it has to, say, renegotiate or reestablish a session, um, it will tell you and suggest you, oh, this one switch out of all the switches has this different configuration, which is OSPF timer is blah, and the other border leaves have this. And that's so um, the troubleshooting aspect is really interesting because it gives you overlay and underlay counters correlated together. So it saves you quite some time in the operation day-to-day -day aspect of an overlay solution.